Hello everybody, in this episode of Programming Algorithms we're going to look at other data structures. We're going to introduce them in this semester and we're going to look at them um, in more detail in, the, in, in semester two. But I just want to give you a flavour of the other kinds of data structures we can declare. Unlike arrays and, and uh, other variables that are built in, these advanced structures typically aren't available in the language itself, but might be uh, available as, as pre-written pre libraries by somebody else. So um, they're very useful structures and we'll have a look at a few of them. What we're going to look at is linked lists, trees, stacks and then queues. So we start off with the idea of a linked list. A linked list is useful because um, when we declare an array it's static in a sense that we have all the values put in but let's say we want to insert a new element in between value number four and five we can't shift the array like that. Or let's say we want to delete three elements out of the array. So let's say the array was 10 units long and we want to make it a, a seven unit long array. We want to delete out units two, six, and nine. There isn't a, a very easy way of doing that using an array, but we have this structure called a linked list that allows us to add and take elements away very dynamically, very easily. To do so, the linked list is made up of what are called a series of nodes, very much like the boxes in an array, but the node has two parts to it, whereas the boxes in an array typically only have one part to them. Each node has a value in it, the same as an array, but it's also got a second thing called a pointer. Now a pointer is a special variable type in most programming languages that allows you to point to another location in memory. So that's all it is, it points to somewhere else in memory. And we'll see uh, 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 exactly what that looks like in the next slide. Here's a linked list. The first node has the number 23 and it points to another node which has 62 in it, which points to another node which has 37 in it, which points to another node which has 31 in it, and that points to null, so that means it's the end of the list. So we conceptually think of the first element in the list as being the start of the list, and the null value, as if you traverse or go through a list and you hit the null, then you know that's the end of the list. So the last value always points to the end of the list. Every other node points to the succeeding node in the linked list. Now if we want to add a value in, let's say in between 62 and 37, and we want to put the number 26 in between 62 and 37. It's a very simple operation. If we had to do this in an array, we'd have to shift every value forward one and then put the number 26 in. But with the linked list, all we do is take the pointer that's pointing to 37 and instead point it down to 26. And now take the pointer from 26 and point it up to 37 and that's it. Then if we read from the start, 23, 62, 26, 37, 31, and in the computer that looks like this now. So that's all you need to do to add an element in. Just change the pointer from the previous value to point to the new element and take the new element pointer and point to what would be the succeeding value. If we want to delete a value, it's even simpler. Let's say we want to delete 26 out, we didn't like it, we thought it was a good idea, but we want to get rid of it. We just take the pointer from 62 and make the point 36. That's all we need to do, and that is the element 26 deleted. Why is that? Because if we start at the start, 23, 62, 37, 31, that's what we have in the list now. Now we, we both know that 26 is still pointing to 37, but that doesn't matter when we're going through the linked list we don't see that at all because we start at the start and work our way to the end and there's no nothing pointing to 26. Therefore, it's as, it's, it's as if it's not there. So from the computer's point of view, it looks like we've returned to the initial list again. So that's a linked list. Um, we can also have another structure which is called a tree. A tree is made up of nodes as well, like the linked list, but each node has three parts instead of two parts. So this is three parts. And the three parts are a value, the same, and it has two pointers. One pointer called the left pointer and one pointer called the right pointer. So what does a tree look like? Let's see. A tree looks like this. We have a uh, a series of values pointing to another series of values. Either it's pointing to values or it's their po the, the pointers are pointing to null. I haven't added the nulls in at the bottom there, but we'll assume they're there. In terms of nomenclature, how we name this, 
the topmost value in the tree is called the root. So all the, you, when we're searching the tree, we start at the root and work our way down. If there is a node that has, uh, that the pointers left and right both point to other values, we call that a parent node. And any of the values that are being pointed to, we can call those children nodes. But the lowest most, um, the lowest most nodes on the tree are all called leaf nodes or terminal nodes. So that's a bit of terminology there. And, and uh, trees are very useful for a variety of things like encryption and um, even searching, uh, structuring files, things like that. So this is a structure we look at in a lot of detail. The kind of tree we're looking at here is specifically a binary tree. That is to say that each value points to two or no sub-values. Each uh, node points to two, two nodes or, or no node. And in operating systems, we'll see how heaps use a tree structure for storing uh, uh, files and lists and things like that. That's a tree. We can also have an, a, a stack. So what's a stack? Well, everybody knows what a stack is. If you have a stack of plates or a stack of pages or a stack of files or things like that, a stack is simply a pile of stuff that you add to the top and take away from the top. So if we look at our stacks there, you couldn't pull something out from the bottom and it caused the whole thing to fall down. So we take away from the top and add to the top. So we call that the last in, first out principle. So whatever was last added to the stack, that's the first thing that's taken out. So we call that LIFO, last in, first out. So the last item to join the stack is the first item to be served or looked at. So if this is our stack and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six values in it, if we want to add a new value, we'll add it to the top. We say that the bottom is the lowest, low, the first value that was added and we keep adding to the top. If we want to add a value in, we add it to the top. So that's the top now, 67, and if we want to take a value out, we take it out like that. When we, when, sometimes terminologically we say we're pushing a value onto the top and popping the top value off. But we can't get, the only value we can access at the moment is 67. The next value we can access is 59, 53, 26, in that order. So we can't jump down to 31. We can only go from the top and move our way down. So that's a stack. And a similar concept is a queue. So I think we all know what a queue is. A queue is the opposite of a stack in some ways. Instead of being last in, first out, it's first in, first out. So whoever gets to the front of the queue first, they're the first person that gets served. Um, if you join at the back, but you don't get served until everybody else who's in front of the queue gets served before you. So if we have a queue of values like this, and we want to, we say the, the, the rightmost one is the front and the leftmost one is the back, then if we want to add a value in, it can only go in after 59. So it gets added on there. And if we say, give me the head of the queue or, or finish, deal with the, f the first person in the queue, it's number 31 that gets taken out first. So the, the front of the queue gets dealt with first, elements are added onto the back. And this is very useful if these numbers represent jobs in a printer or something like that. So if we, if we have 10 printers all connected, or we have 10 computers all connected to one printer and we all send jobs to the printer, instructions to print something. Whoever sends their job first to the printer, it should get printed first, then the next person, then the next person. So we'll hear about printer queues, and that's what it means. It means there is a strict rule, generally, whoever comes first gets served first. And if I add a print job onto the list, it gets added to the back. So that's what a queue is. So that is the four structures we're going to look at, linked lists, trees, queues and stacks. So thanks very much. We'll see you on the next episode.